Right, what are we, voltage, voltage. We have got a data voltage logger thing here. We're gonna look at this today. Right, so I'm gonna say, right, why, oh! <laughs> Right, why are we looking at this data voltage logger? So, we are trying to do a wiring kit to make it easy to wire in a dash cam. Front here. Right, and we have made up a little loom that we've done the video for this, I'll put it up there, that taps into the power feed for the overhead console in the car. Okay, now, people have asked some very good questions. They said, right, Brilliant, Simon, you've got the voltage there. The Defender is made with a smart alternator. So what does a smart alternator do? So a smart alternator, rather than continually trying to push charge into the battery, what it does is it monitors how much current the battery is taking, and when the battery is getting full, it stops charging, and that reduces the drag on the engine. So the alternator has a clever way of switching itself off, which is brilliant and so you get slightly better improved miles per gallon. But the trouble is you get this weird voltage thing happening where when the alternator's charging, you've got 14 volts, and when it thinks it's full, it drops to 12, and then when it starts up again, it's 14. So we wanted to understand that, so we are gonna plug in our little interposer loom into the overhead socket, and we are gonna connect these wires in, and we are gonna go out for a drive and see what the voltage. Now the other thing we need to look at is, I thought originally that was battery voltage, and I thought it stayed there permanently, but after you turn the car off, after about 20 minutes, it seems to go into a power save mode and cut the power to the overhead console. Right, so we are gonna do some testing, right. Okay. So we have bought this data logger, we haven't used it yet, from RS Components of Pro, is that because we're professionals, Tyler? Always. Always. Always professional, right? Didn't say it, bodge. It wasn't expensive. It was about £30. So I thought, well, I'll try this. Right, and what do we get? I've had a little look. Right. Right. You get a, a sort of pen-looking thing. And it, it sort of comes apart. And what you've got is you've got the USB, and in here you've got a memory. And this is going to record the battery voltage that is seen on these two little pins here. So that little cover was originally on there. We have to prise it off. It's not going back on very well, is it, Tyler? No. But we're not too worried, are we? How does that? No, we're not. And so what you've got is you've got two little screws on that side. And Tyler assures me, although I, I cannot see with my eyes, apparently there's a plus and a minus. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna get the cables out of here. Right, and then we are gonna, we're gonna screw those in there. Now we could skip this whole step actually, and we could just screw, we could tin those with a bit of solder, Tyler, to make them nicer. We could screw those in there, and then what you do is you then plug this in here. You've got to get it the right way round. In fact, there was a little, there's two little arrows you line up there, even. All right, and then it's all connected, and then we just throw that up go out for a drive and then we come back and plug this in the computer, download some software and we should hopefully, I've got no idea, I haven't done it yet, see a graph of the voltage over time. So we should be able to see how long it cuts off, how the smart alternator works. So we are gonna test out the voltage data. Right, so before we plug the data logger into the car, we've got to activate the data logger. So you've got to download some software and I'll put the link to the download in the description below. Um, and also I'll put the link of where we bought it from, right? And then you'll come up with this screen, Tyler will fly the software. So the software is downloaded, we've just had a quick play with it. Plug it into your USB port. And basically there's three bits to the software. This is the setup, and this is where you start and stop it going. And we'll have a look at some of the features in here. And then obviously stop and then download the data and then you can actually view it in a nice graphical form. So, right, so we are going to start the data logger. Okay, and then you can actually call your data logger, you can give it a name if you want. Defender, yeah, okay, we've called it that. And select the time, so you can select the frequency. So in this drop-down box here, you can select, and we'll, let's do it every, let's do it every, 
Yeah, every second. And we've got nine hours, and that'll still give us nine hours of recording. Right, and then standard calibration, which is zero to 30 volts, which is fine. Next. Now, you can set voltage alarms so that at a certain, if the voltage exceeds a certain amount, then you can have an alarm. We don't need any of that. We're just literally going to log the data. And we're going to go for immediate start. There we go. Let's do it. Right, so yeah, you've got to remember you've got the little white triangle there. We've got the little white triangle under there. And we just get those two. Right, and then I can throw all that back up inside the roof. And then we can take that out for a drive. Right, and then I'll, I'll, I'll log some data. So I'll take it out for a drive. I want to look at the battery voltages as we're driving along and it should go up to 14 and then the smart alternator should kick in and it should turn the alternator off and it should drop to 12 and then I'll park up, I'll leave it and it's how long it takes to go to sleep I need to see. So I'll get in and drive it and download some data and we'll have a look what it looks like. But I've got nine, I've got nine <laughs> hours to do it in. It's recording now. So I'll get out and take it out for a spin and see what data we get. Right, been out for a drive, just come back, just half hour drive, went up the dual carriageway, came back through town. Um, I was trying to get the stop start to kick in, but it's got, it's not having stop start at the moment. That may be because the battery's not fully charged. I haven't been driving it much, don't know. I'll put the picture up to show you where, you, where you've got no stop start and I'll read the um, operator's manual on why that doesn't work. But we digress. So I've parked it and locked it now. It's four o'clock. I'm going to leave it for half an hour now. I want to see how long that overhead console module takes to go into sleep mode so it should be getting a static sort of 12 volts but at some point i'm expecting it to go into sleep mode and i want to know how long that is so i'm going to give it half an hour and we'll come back right it's had time enough to sleep now the tide is just going to pull that center console down there you go I'll grab where's our little dongle there pull him out i'll right, leave it. i'll put that back later right we've got it we've got the red we have the red dongle. Oh, it's like challenge Annika. Here we go. So, are you stick him in your, flash him in your computer. Right. Stop it. It went to the stop. Saved your PC, yes. So it's now stopped. 4,364 readings. readings. Wow, that looks good. A couple of seconds. Okay. Downloading. Download. Right, and then view. Whoa. Ah. Hello. Right, hello. Right. So, can we change the scale of that? Right. So we've got the we've got it, and we've had a look at it. And basically, I'll try and put this on the screen and highlight the areas. So this is when we this is zero volts here, and then we we plugged it into the car, and then where it dips here, this is the voltage dipping. I think due to the fact that the starter motor pulls the battery down, the voltage down as the current draws. Then it sort of has a bit of a wibble. And then this is me driving along and it's very stable. Interestingly, the smart alternator didn't kick in at all. There's none of this where everyone's saying, oh, it's smart alternator is going to cut in and out. We've got none of that. Now, I was using my heater. I was using my radio. And then I did in I did when I was going through the town, it did, we did have one stop start cycle. So I think this is, again, when it drops, this is the battery pulling the voltage as it starts then it came along and this is where we stopped it here which is about four o'clock where i did the other little video and it's actually staying at that voltage there while it's parked up so i thought it's gone to it would go to sleep but how many hours have we got here we've got 45 yeah, we've got 45 minutes here and it still hasn't gone to sleep so i'll drive it home tonight i'll put the data logger on it and then we've got nine hours. Now we could change the settings. Let's do it now, Tyler. And rather than do it every second, because I only have nine hours, it won't get me through the night. Let's see if we can go every five seconds. Five seconds, seconds will give four to five hours. Yeah, that'll do. Right. So this is going to take a reading every five. We don't want any alarms going off, do we? Not in the night. Need to start. Go for it. So we can plug that back in. Yeah, so that's now live and ready to go. We'll plug that back in. I'll drive it home tonight. I'll leave it over. And I mean, so 45 hours, that's like nearly, it's nearly two days, isn't it? Yeah. 
Right, we're gonna get the voltage recorder out. And we got George helping me today, so which is my son, so I don't need say hello George. Hi. Um so I don't need the uh, don't need the mask on today because you're in my bubble, George. Well you're my son, for goodness me. Right, let me just pull this down again. Oh, uh, oh, I've got dirty fingerprints on it. I've been right, George hasn't seen this. So what we do is we pull that out, George, and that's got all the data recorded on it for the last hmm, however long it was overnight. So we'll get this plugged in here and we'll have a look at the data and see how long it took for that to turn off. Right, so we've got it in, we've stopped it recording, so we've got 13,000 readings. So let's have a look what it looks like. So this was yesterday evening. So this, this bit of the low voltage is before we plugged it into the car. Then we plugged it into the car. Um, and then this was my short drive home. So yeah, so this, you get the little dip in voltage and we can actually, let me, let me analyze that a bit more closely. So yeah, so this was when we then plugged it in, then, then the voltage drops for the starter motor. Then I drive home, there's a bit of a ripple there somewhere. Maybe I had a stop start cycle on the way. And then the voltage goes down and then right. So then it went all overnight. So let's just go back, let's zoom out again. So let's see. So that's that voltage. That's brilliant. So that voltage doesn't go to sleep. There was some speculation that the voltage on that takeoff in the headlining would go to sleep, but I wasn't sure. But you can see here that remains live all overnight. Now, does it, if I hover over it, does it give me a live, does it, does it give me the actual reading? Let me see what it dropped overnight. So when we parked it up, it was at 12.9 volts. You can see down here. Can you see that? Yeah. And then as I go, does it, oh, it dropped to 12 point. Look, you can see the voltage drop overnight. And that could be due to temperature because it got quite cold last night, didn't it, John? 12.75. So it dropped, yeah. So it lost a bit of voltage overnight. So that's, even that's quite interesting. So this data log is flipping diamond. I'm well impressed with it. So, right, let's summarize this video. So what have we learned in this video? We have learned the RS Components 28 pound data logger is flipping brilliant. It will record the data, it comes with the software so you can get an insight into what's happening on certain voltages. It seems pretty accurate as well. We have learned that the sat nav takeoff that loom that we've done that we're going to put in the overhead loom on the defender 2020 and i suspect on the same on the other range rover jaguar models we've got someone trialing it on a jaguar i pace it looks like that voltage stays live so it doesn't go to sleep after a period of time so you can use it to power a fully parking mode dash cam so there we go. I hope you've liked that video and we'll get those dash cam looms up for sale ASAP.